Good morning. We're getting the dryer fired up. Ready to go shell corn here real quick. Burr, it's a little chilly here this morning. We're gonna we're gonna try out the heated seat on the combine. Um uh, it's muddy. I'm afraid we're gonna mud the roads up really bad, especially that green cart, those tracks. But dad might have to get tobacco and scrape the road off. We'll see. Brought the combine back to the farm here. We needed fuel and uh, our hydraulic oil was a little low after we had that oil leak on the bean head yesterday, so I put a couple gallons in there. Top it off the dev and we're gonna get going. Well, this combine's a little faster to get set up and uh, ready to go when you pull into a new field. Like I just, I, I just pulled off the road and started shelling right away. That's cool. One thing I don't like, though, or not, not that I don't like, I just, it's, it's rather inconvenient. I fold the ladder around to go down the road. I don't, I, I, I would have to stop and get out to unfold it because I don't have a power ladder. Dang it. Although. One of you, I said that last week, and one of you guys sent me an email because you make an aftermarket power ladder attachment to make that a power ladder. So, you know, there's always that option. Seems rather lazy, but there is that option. So the stalks are a little wet this morning yet from the dew. Um, we would not be combining beans this early in the morning, but the corn, it doesn't really affect things because the grain is still dry. It does not soak up moisture like soybeans do. And there's uh, so little material other than the ears and husks running through the combine that it really doesn't affect the performance of the machine. It is possible that the wet stuff could make um, uh, things sticky inside the combine and you could get stuff stuck to the sieves and it could plug things up a little bit. Honestly, I have never seen that happen just from wet stalks. Snow, yes. Um, but just wet, not really an issue. We can get out and check it in a little while if I'm really concerned about it. But you got to remember, we're blowing an awful lot of air through this machine all the time, and it helps dry stuff out and keep everything moving and stop it from sticking. So, not too worried about it. Anyway, we're getting some endros done, getting stuff opened up here. I adjusted the full grain tank buzzer um, paddle sensor the other day. We're testing it right now. My windows are full. That says we're full, but it never went off. So I'm gonna go. Oh, there it is. Sweet. Okay, it works. Before it overflows, that's good. Just don't stop too quick or turn too fast. It's full. Well, the ground conditions here are a lot better than they were last night. Um, that said, we're trying to minimize traffic across the fields with the grain cart and stuff. I was doing end rows on the far side, so I was no way I was going to make it back up to the front here. So we're unloading on the go, but we can make rounds. I don't know if we're going to dump on the go or not. I'm thinking not, but I mean, there's only 18 acres here. We've already got six and a half done. I'm just getting end rows done. Not even. We got a little to do over there yet. Um, so there's only 10, 12 acres left here. This won't take very long. Rock's getting a little cab time in the new combine. Um, we are just kind of parking it here and I'm filling the cart up and then he's kind of just take it over and put it in the truck. Like I said, we're trying to minimize traffic and compaction a little bit out here. I should have enough to load a truck or at least pretty darn close on this cart load. Once we get out of some of these longer rows here, I'll show you on the map. Uh, we've got some rows back here. We'll have to have the cart down there to get to those, but yep, moving. Okay, so I have very little left to do here. Just a few rounds in front of these uh, trees to the road. They're sort of short rounds. Um, I've been doing a little research on how to do a yield calibration on this because yes, this has active yield where it calibrates itself, but kind of wondering if I did a manual yield calibration and gave it something to start from, it wouldn't dial it in a little bit closer. I don't know that we're terribly far off, but I don't really think this is 100, 235 bushel corn. So. We're gonna try a manual yield calibration. I am learning the process. This one's a little different than the old combine. Um, and it's been a couple years since I've done one even with that combine because we put the active yield on. So we'll see uh, how this works here, but we're gonna use the scale on the grain cart to help dial in the combine. 
Okay, so here is what I am uh, gathering from this. Basically, we're doing um, three different flow rates. Uh, I'm trying to go with a slow one right now, so I got to keep her down. Keep it down. Flow down. Flow down. There you go. So this gauge here is telling me how much material is flowing through the combine per second. We want to keep it in the low flow range for this one, which means I have to drive slow. 1.7 miles an hour here and uh, we're gonna make a full round here and then we'll empty into the grain cart and I'll show you that in a minute but this is adding up uh, how many total pounds that the combine thinks that we have got um, I just did one in the mid flow range and then we'll do a, a high flow range which should be basically our normal speed um, when we get this one done this one just is the one that it, it should take a minute that's why we pick short rounds and not full long rounds uh, you have to get a minimum of 5,000 pounds on your sample the first one was 6,400 so we're we're perfect in the right spot okay that was a brutally slow round but now we're emptying into the cart um, I clicked the done button it says we got over 8,000 pounds we do not this is the one that was way off so when we're done emptying Shut the unloading auger off here. And Brock will get on the radio and tell us a weight. So we're gonna hit this match scale weight button. This is the Six, sample we 6, just did. 6,600. 6,600? Yes. 6,600. Yep, that one was off a bit, you think? And then we hit save. 28%, ouch. The last one was only five. Okay. And then we do it again, and this one's going to be our normal harvesting speed, or more. So we'll hit this little record button, and hit start, and away we go. Keep her up there in the high flow range. It's a bushel a second we're harvesting, a bushel a second. Alright, well I finished that third one, and then... Um, uh, was able to use select those samples to use in the yield recording or the yield calibration, I guess, and it it, it, it moved the accuracy level up one bar. So uh, we're better, but we're gonna keep doing it. I've got what two more rounds here, so we'll do two more samples because we can, and uh, we'll see. So we're doing another medium flow rate one. We're done here. Uh, 17.9 acres. So when Brock gets done emptying, I'm gonna ask him how many pounds that he unloaded and we can compare that to what the combine so we can do the math from that and figure out what this field yielded but it says 238 i'm guessing it was 210 to 215 by the time we're all said and done which is good corn so we made it to the next field um we are going to go and do my bean plot here shortly it is just noon now so i don't know that we could run beans quite yet anyway but it is getting closer um but this field here we're just going to do end rows basically uh along the electric poles and stuff here and mess around with this and maybe up by the house a little bit for a couple of reasons um one i'm sure that the landlord here wants this corn gone so that they can see because they always make comments about not liking corn being planted around their house and they understand and it's okay but the quicker we can get it out of there the better so we're at least going to get it opened up and the other reason is we have a bean field over there uh, across the road from this other house that uh there's nowhere to park trucks in there but it's directly across the road from this one, across a different road. Yeah, anyway, I'll show you when I get up there. That if we had these corn stalks opened up enough, we could park trucks on this uh, side road, dirt road, and cart it across if we had to. And if I can just open it up a little bit, it, it gives us that option. So that's what I'm doing. Have I ever told you guys how much having electric poles in your field sucks? Oh, it's a giant pain in the butt. It was when we planted it, it was when we sprayed it, it is when we combine it. So uh, here's how we're handling it. We pull up until we get all of this, try not to run a snout into the pole. We back up, go around. Easier with two hands than one, but do what you gotta do. And then we kind of dive in here. We're gonna leave a little bit over there, come back and clean that up from the opposite direction. Get back on our rows, and there we go. We do that on all of them. 
There's like six of them on this side of the field. Sometimes Brock's a little slow getting going. I caught on the radio and told him, let's go, dump on the go, and it takes him a little while, and now he's going to find out why I was in a hurry, because he's about to get stuck up here. Well, maybe not get stuck, but he isn't going to be able to drive straight, and I was really hoping to get it empty before we got to that point. Want to be close. Make it. So I might not either. See the mud? See the mud? It is a mud hole over here. Um, so I got head dead. Uh, he got the, the hydraulic hose on the head fixed. So that's good. And then um, he was checking on some of the bean fields to see if we couldn't uh, go combine beans somewhere today. He checked this one across the road. It's the one that's the reason why we're doing this so that we could get stuff carted over here. But these ends are so wet, I don't think we can do that anyway. But anyway, he said that field was no, it was too wet. Uh, so he checked another field over that direction, and I got a text from him that said, big no on this field. <laughs> okay. So that isn't going to work. So I don't know that we're going to be able to do any beans other than my plot today. So uh, we're going to we're gonna finish the end rows right here where we're at, make one pass along that road where that truck's going, uh, and then, or well, one round, I guess, and then we're going to pull out of here and go do the bean plot. And then I, I'm guessing... We'll be back in corn after that, but boy, I don't, I just, I don't know what to do. All right, well, we got the end rows done, done there that I wanted to do, so we're uh, pulling out of that field. Um, I'm going to drop the corn head. We're going to get ready to do beans, do my bean plot down there. In fact, I see uh, Tony, my sales rep, is already down there. Uh, so we're going to get this ready here real fast. If I had to guess, as soon as we're done with that, we're going to hook the corn head back up because I don't think we have any beans that will go right now. Um, is a real bummer but what are you gonna do do what you can when you can Let's do a little quick clean up here i parked uh with the wind blowing the right direction so that it's not blowing right in my face good move got a stiff breeze today which should help dry things up a little bit but man it's wet all right well it is bean plot day uh, the bean plot is 30 inch rows. It's the only field I planted in 30 inch rows. There are eight row entries, which means they are 20 feet a piece. So half a header width. Uh, we're getting field signs picked up. I'm gonna make sure we got everything written down right so we know what everything is. And then we'll get started here. Uh, the front half of this field and around the perimeter of the plot are not part of the plot and I need to combine them first so that we got room to work around, but there's only 15 acres in this field. It won't take very long. Plot will take us probably two hours is my guess. Way longer than it should, but it'll be fine. Every time I switch from corn to beans and we go from a 20 foot head to a 40 foot head, I just think this combine is absolutely massive. Like it's, holy crap, this thing is huge. Um, 30 inch beans are a little different combine and just cause they're, they're all in the same track, they're all in the same row. And uh, I'm pushing, dang it, come on. Um, you're, you're using the same few knife sections on the cutter bar. A lot of times guys will run on an angle, um, which I obviously I can't do with, uh, the plot because we'll be going across varieties, but it's just, it's just a little different. You guys, um, remember that hydraulic hose that I told you that dad fixed? He did fix that one. That was the wrong one though. My fault, because when we looked at it yesterday, that one was worn through to the metal braiding in between and underneath the rubber exterior, and I thought for sure it was the one that was leaking. Uh, it wasn't, and so we're going to get a hydraulic hose, hopefully. Bummer. Nope, hoses don't like it when there's holes in them. Back in business. 
All right, so that hose goes from right here up and over and around and down and loops up and attaches right there. It's got something to do with that motor, which drives the draper belts, and uh, you can see that it was spewing oil everywhere, but uh, we should be good to go. Brock put oil in for me while I was gone, so <sighs> take two. So here's what running a bean plot looks like. We just take half a header width and uh, very slowly work our way across the field. Pull a sample from the tank tank over there. And uh, yeah, it's it's a little slow going, but we're getting it. I don't know if you guys can pick it up on the camera or not, but this variety that we're combining now, this is a 2.5 maturity and uh, there's some green stems out there. There's This is greener than anything else we've done so far. Now the, the beans are dry. It says they're 12.6, but uh, definitely would be a tough combine in one early in the year, I think. Although I had a bunch of these out, they weren't terrible. I mean, uh, combine-wise, they were really good beans, so I don't know. Okay, we are moving right across here. This is the last of the variety trials entries, and... Uh, I have no idea how accurate our yield monitor is here, but I think they're all in the 70s and 80s yield-wise, and they've been fairly consistent. There's some variation, but we'll have to run the samples and uh, get the uh, weights put into our spreadsheet that'll calculate out the final yields for us. So now that we're done with the uh, variety trials, we're into some of the agronomic stuff, and I've really only got two things out here. We've got a population study and a sulfur trial. Uh, this one here, this entry here is 31 bean, 3152s planted at 60,000, which is like a third or just over just over a third of what our normal planting rate is. Normally we plant 160,000 and this is really, really low. So um, I'm curious to see what they do. They look like they're going to be just fine. They've looked great all year. I've been really surprised with uh, how much they bushed out and how great they looked. All right, so the last trial over here is my sulfur trial, and this one I did with the starter system on the planter. I used ammonium thiosulfate to put some sulfur on, so this one got 10 gallons, the next one got 20, the last one over there got zero. I can't split the planter with the rates on the starter, so they're full 16 row, 40 foot entries, which is a lot nicer, they go faster. Well, that's done. This field was in pretty good shape. Unfortunately, I don't, we don't have any other bean fields that I can combine, because they're all too muddy. Oh well. Oh hey, I get a question about that little thing hanging there quite a bit. It's not the price tag on the new combine, as was suggested. That's the dust cover plug for the GPS plug up there. It's supposed to clip up into that other little slot, um, but it doesn't stay, so it just kind of hangs there. That's what that is. Okay, well, I got down here and we were dropping the head, and then Dad pulls in and he's like, hey, leave the head on. I'm like, why? Because he wants to go you're not even gonna believe this. You're not. This is. It's October nineteenth. We're gonna go combine double crop beans. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. So we have some right across the road. They. We went and looked at them. I said, well, let's go look first. And uh, they are not quite ready. There's just too many green ones out there that I don't think we can combine them quite yet. Um, but those are a three-one double crop bean. I have in another spot. Uh, some two eights, and I, so after we looked at these, I had Dad go up there and said, "Go check this other field." And uh, so he went and looked, and he said, "Yep, they'll go." So we're gonna go combine some double crop beans. Ay ay ay! Seems like we have more important things to do, but I guess they got to get done at some point. It's a good bean running day, so we're gonna go do it. So Dad's bringing the head, Brock's getting the cart empty from uh, the last of the beans from that field, and uh, yeah, they're just a little bit too green out there yet few more days and they'd probably go but not quite there well this seems rather foolish to be out here right now <laughs> there are some beans we are we are actually getting some beans and they're dry so we're gonna do it I don't think we can do the whole field but we'll see how far we get I don't know I, this this is yeah oh well well, in the back of this field, these double crops actually look halfway decent. Uh, I don't know how much I trust the combine right now, but it says they're like in the mid 30s and that's a huge win if they are. Um, so for those of you that don't know or, or are unfamiliar with this practice, 
Um, these are what we call double crop soybeans, and we call them double crop because we plant them after we have already harvested a wheat crop. So we planted wheat in this field last fall, we harvested it in July, and then immediately or as quickly as possible uh, planted soybeans into it. July is really late for planting soybeans around here, but if you get the right weather and you get enough moisture and the price is right, sometimes planting double crop beans can pay off. And so we took a gamble and did quite a few acres of them this year. Uh, this is one of those fields. Um, by the time you pay for the seed cost, which is probably around $50 an acre, say $10 an acre to plant them, which makes it $60 an acre, and even if you charge yourself $30 for this pass that I'm doing right now, see it's a little wet, uh, to combine them, you're up to $90 an acre, and $90 an acre is not too bad. Now, we did spray these, but we were gonna spray the wheat stubble regardless whether we had double crops in them or we were just gonna fit it under to get ready for next year. So that's kind of a wash. It's not really an added cost. And, it, and oh, I did spray some insecticide up here. Did I do this field? I think I did. Um, so that was a couple bucks an acre plus the application. So figure you're at $100 an acre in cost. Uh, at $10 soybeans, which they're closer to 12, well, 11 or 12 right now than 10, but figure 10, that's 10 bushel an acre. We need to pay for it. 29.30 average or 24 almost 25 like yeah they that's doubling our money or more so we'll run them uh this is a quick operation we're running 6.3 miles an hour right now we're just gonna fly through these and do them as quick as possible like i got a whole window covered up already that's awesome there's actually some beans here and uh like i said i don't know that we can go all the way across this because this is the field that we planted part of it and then they still had straw up here so we ended up coming back a few days later and planting between the windrows um, and so some of that later planted stuff might be a little too green yet but we'll do what we can and we'll get some double crop beans out tonight after we get this done we'll probably switch back to corn the reason that we decided to come up here and run these double crops today is because one we want to combine beans we have a good bean combining weather they're dry which means you go get them um, and our other bean fields are just too wet yet because of the tillage practices. So this field was no-tilled the wheat last year. We no-tilled the beans and it hasn't been worked up, fit, and done any tillage work to it um, for two years. And so the ground is firm, it's solid, it's not super soft like the fields that we did do deep tillage to last fall. And um, we can get across it. We can't get across any of our other bean ground right now. And even the corn that we have out in the field yet is still really soft. And we don't have a lot of that that we can do. We've got like 70 acres in one field that we could think about doing, and we'll probably do that tomorrow. But no, this is something to do in the meantime. So we're gonna keep going here. I tell you what, some of these beans are not bad. Like these are running mid thirties. And I don't, like I said, I don't know how accurate it is, but we're averaging like 26, 27. If that's anywhere remotely close, I, this is fantastic. What a deal. Uh, we are flying across here because we're combining at like six miles an hour, so we've already got 20 acres done. Well, Brock's been asking me to learn how to run the combine for a while, so double crop beans, you get your shot. It's good play stuff, learn. A brand new combine. Dang, what a lucky dude. Anyway, still, still going well here. These beans vary quite a bit. It seems like you get in the front part of the field here and they're not as good. Then you drop off this little ridge towards the back and they, they're, they're better. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with all of them. Beanhead's doing a good job. Um, we're taking a lot of straw and material through the combine with the, the wheat stubble that's out here. But uh, most of that has broken down some. You can kind of see what's left over there. Yeah. So I know I've been uh, pretty skeptical of the air bars and uh, whether or not they would be super beneficial for us. In this situation, no doubt in my mind an air bar would help. These short little beans and getting them blown off the cutter bar and in onto the draper belt so that they'll move and get to the center of the, uh, the head to get into the combine. Uh, yeah, this, this is the point where it would be really nice to have one. 
I still don't think I'm losing two or three bushels to the acre, but uh, it would make this nice and smooth and even and easier. But anyway. You got your fix yet? I think if you want me to unload the grain cart, I will. I, I think you should probably go home. All right, we got a, we got a, look at that. We got a whole grain cart load of double crop beans. And um, I, I, I was contemplating quitting because I don't think we have enough up here to get another full grain cart load of double crop beans. Yeah. I don't care. But um, we're going to keep going for a little while anyway. All right, so we had to do some endros in the back and they got sort of green on me back there. And you guys see this color change right over here? The brown and the blue are my uh, varieties of what got planted here. That brown is all that we planted the first time and the blue variety is not ready yet. So there's only a round and a half left here. Phil needs just a little bit to top off this truck, a little bit meaning whatever I've got in the grain tank here. So I think we're gonna quit. Uh, we got 40 acres done. That's really good. I'm happy with that. Um, and there's just not enough more to make it worth staying. Man, he's all right. I tell you what. Unhook the head and he's right there with that leaf blower. Keeping it clean. All right. Well, I have a feeling we're done for the night. Phil's going to haul that load of beans in, which is, is awesome. I mean, we got a full semi load of double crop beans. Cool. Uh, I did the math on from what the grain cart said. Our combine is high on the yield reading. It said they were 27. Uh, they were actually 23, which I consider a win. That is more than doubling our money up here. So it's a good deal. Here's the hose that Dad replaced. And here's why we thought that it was the one that was the problem. Like that one there is actually wet with fluid like it may have actually been leaking too maybe we had two hoses that blew at the same time huh, huh, i don't know anyway it needed done and then we fixed the other one so now the bean head's good to go anyway uh i'm going home uh early night tonight which is fine um it is really frustrating to not be able to just go right now because the crops are ready the beans are dry we just can't get across the ground it's so wet and muddy and it has to do with our tillage practices so somebody asked me this and um, what's the difference between running the ripper and the disc? Um, essentially, it's depth, right? So the disc, we're only, we're only going an inch or two deep, and the goal and the idea behind the disking pass in corn stalks, uh, which we do it once in the fall and then again in the spring, is more of a residue management. It's to break down those corn stalks and to give us a good seed bed to plant the beans into. The ripper is running a shank, nine, 10 inches deep through the soil to lift and fracture and break up compaction and to level. And there's lots of reasons to do it. Ideally, those beans would yield better because we ran that ripper through there and they have less compaction and they're just, they're, they're better growing environment and conditions. That remains to be seen whether or not it's the case, but what the end result that it's happening right now and that's causing us problems is those fields where we ran the ripper it did its job and they're softer and they're not as firm and because they're wet, they're soft. And so um, while that ripper is good to make our beans grow better and our corn especially, uh, it causes problems when it's wet with being able to get across the field. And yeah, that's, that's what the problem is now. All of the beans that we have left here at Waldron, we ran that ripper across except for the rest of the double crop beans, but they're not ready to run yet. Uh, the beans down to Berkey, we did not. We disked those corn stalks before we planted the beans. But there's a chance of rain on Thursday. We've got one more really good day, and those fields are really wet as it is because we've had more rain there than we've had here. We've had over 15 inches of rain at our farm in Berkey since the last week of August, in the last two months. It's just terribly wet. Uh, so we can't really just go there either. Uh, it, it's, Dad went down and looked today, and it's, it's not ready. Um, so tomorrow's plan is we have a field of corn that we had started a while ago. There's about 70 acres left in it and we can park the trucks on the road and get that stuff out. Uh, it's well tiled. It's the field that we tiled last year. So, uh, we're going to go there and try and knock that out. We should be able to get it done, but that should take most of the day. And then we'll see from there. It's supposed to rain tomorrow night, Thursday. Um, 
maybe we can find another cornfield to go and work on. Maybe not. Maybe the bean ground will firm up enough that we can get across it. I don't know. Um, I would think two days would make a big difference from where we were yesterday to tomorrow. And, and maybe we'd be able to get across that that we couldn't yesterday. But Dad looked at them today, and they were awfully soft. So I don't know if that's going to be the case. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Questions and comments, leave them down below. And um, like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I was reading through a lot of your comments on yesterday's video about my compaction study that I did. And uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Um, I'm not questioning the value of tracks at all. Yeah, tracks are definitely um, something that's most likely in our future and will help alleviate some of that compaction issue. They will not eliminate it though. So while I got more calc I have more calculations that I need to do with how much that um, pinch row and that yield loss is actually uh, affecting our yields and costing us, I do not for a second believe that just going to tracks is going to eliminate it and bring those rows back to even. That's not going to be the case. The question is what's the difference going to be uh, as far as getting a demo or a side by side and trying it. Hard to do. They don't just give those tractors away to use, so um, I don't know if that's something that I would be able to do in the future or not. Uh, and a few of you asked about LSW tires. LSW are low sidewall tire, um, where they, they're basically like a big floater tire, where they'd be really wide footprint. Instead of running duels, you want to run one solid big wide tire. Um, I, I think there's some merit there. They're probably a cheaper option than tracks, sort of, kind of. Um, they have their own drawbacks and, and other negatives associated with them, but um, would certainly be an option to spread out that compaction. I, I know a lot of people use them and plant right into them. That's the problem, right? So we run the duels because there's a row that gets planted between the duels and you're not actually running it over. Clearly our pinch row, the, the compaction is still hurting that row, but it's in theory, not as bad as if you're planting right into the tire track. And with the LSWs, you are planting right into that tire track, um, which they say isn't really an issue. I, I don't know. I haven't run that. So, um, but yeah, that's that's something that we could look at as well. Uh, I still think tracks are the way to go and that we will end up that direction at some point. But uh, yeah, if you do the math and extrapolate out how much that yield loss was costing us, I know it's only on, in our case, an eighth of the planter, right? Two out of 16 rows, um, but two out of 16 rows is one eighth of our acres. And as somebody else pointed out, on 800 acres, that's 100 acres. On 1,600 acres, that's... 200 acres. That's a lot. It adds up. You take 60 bushel on 200 acres and uh, you're talking about 12,000 bushels a year times $5 corn. That's 60 grand a year. Not once, a year that we would be increasing our yields. Now that's going to eliminating it. And like I said, you're not going to eliminate it. But could you capture a quarter of that back or half of that back by going to tracks? I, I don't know. 15 to Twenty, thirty thousand dollars is pretty significant amount to save. So, um, definitely more to learn there.